Hey guys, welcome to the talk. My name is George Lamont. Welcome my next guest, Frankie Cullis. There he is. What's up? <laughs> What's up, G? Nothing much, man. You, you look like this. I need to see a little bit more of you, bro. That's you good. Hello, hello. So everybody, so listen, we're going to get right into it. I got the time of going. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. You know, I've known you for many, many years, um, even back from back in the Bronx. We're going to get into all that. So is it Frankie Cutlass or is it Frank Malave? What, what, what are we calling you? The government name is Frank Malave. <laughs> the stage name is Frank Cutlass. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, George Garcia doesn't have a ring to it. George Lamont sounds way better. Right, right, right. Um, but um, I want to thank you for coming in. And I appreciate oh, it. I know it's a rainy day. I know that you usually do your Monday lives, but you said you're going to chill to 2020. You got Arthur Bacon, Tina B coming in. So, you know, I'm going to be watching that. Yeah, that's um, going to be actually, actually, that's going to be uh, December 23rd. I got Tina B and Arthur Baker. I'm going to chill for these next two Mondays because the technical situation I have, like I was explaining earlier to right, you, right, right, I right. have to just upgrade the equipment, you know, as far yeah. as to go live on Facebook, you know. All right. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to start naming stuff. Uh, you know, uh, I go to a site where it's you know, it's a reputable a reputable site, and it pretty much the, the problem with you is you're Frankie Cutlass, Frank Malave as the producer, DJ right. Frankie Cutlass as the DJ right. remixer. Then you got Frankie Cutlass, the artist, you know, right. and right. then you got another team production that you got some team production. What's it called? Uh, something with a boy. Oh man, that was a name that I made up. It was just to get that record out. But I also all my early freestyle stuff, I go on the Frank Malave. That that right. was another re, that was another thing why the freestyle community was kind of confused because every time I kept saying, "Yeah, I produced that record. I produced that record." And it was in Frankie Cutlass. They used to go back to the credits and look at the credits. They're like, "They ain't no Frankie Cutlass." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whatever." It's Frank Malave. That's my government name. <laughs> That's, That's government because I was young. Yeah. I, and then Frankie Cutlass didn't exist back then. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so for everyone that don't know who just came in uh, for the for, for look. This show is based on Latin hip hop, freestyle music, right? That's right. what I know. That's my professional, my, my, my professionality and my input. And this is where I get all my information because I know a lot of these guys. So this show is basically talking about freestyle. And the reason why Bronx, Spanish, Harlem and Brooklyn always comes in or Queens is because it Bronx was the Mecca of freestyle. It's where right. I started. You know right. that. And you know the whole pioneers and everything who started it. So I'm going to start just throwing records that you've been involved with whether you sang background, wrote the song, co-wrote, edit, mix, remix, produce. You know, your name is on it. Here we go. We got and more, you'll never find another love. The wow. real sisters, I don't want you back. And more again, you got Chrissy Ie's Love Desire. You got Materialistic Girl by M More, The Bagel Boys. You got Lizette Melendez Together Forever. You got Cynthia Love Me Tonight, which is one of my all-time favorite freestyle records when freestyle was declining right this right. new sound came in and it was called what they called it new school new school and you were the me and carlos burials right me and carlos burials that's right exactly you and carlos burials you got k7 zing zing swing batter batter swing you got um you got uh uh uh, uh puerto rico <laughs> that's come on puerto rico <laughs> oh when he goes on the set in fact joe I mean, it goes on and on. We could keep going, man. But look, what I want to talk about is let's start. To, let's start and let's tell these people what age did Frankie, the Frank Malave, started messing around with just music in general. DJ at the age of thirteen to fourteen, producing at the age of fifteen. And you're originally from Spanish Harlem. So you started Spanish Harlem. I started in my in the projects, yeah. Right. So, and the funny thing is, the majority of the artists that I looked up to, like TKA, the, the, the original TKA, Sapphire, you know, Lisa Lisa, I know that she was from Hell's Kitchen. Right. But y'all were there. You were all in city, Manhattan. Manhattan That's right. Was like, That's right. Although it started in the Bronx, the singers and the producers, I know Andy was a uh, 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 Brooklyn, I think he said Brooklyn or Queens. Uh, uh, Tony's from Brooklyn. And... You know, everybody just met there. Joy Gardner was living in the city as well. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Albert Cabrera used to live across the street from me. There you go. Land Rass was Albert Cabrera. I used to, I used to, I used to run across the street, and I used to uh, pick. He lived on the first floor, so I used to pick up rocks. I was 15, and I used to throw rocks at his window. <laughs> 
to get his attention. And he'd be like, pick up the whip. Hey, Fred, what's up? I was like, yo, Albie, what's up? We used to call him Albie. Yo, Albie, what's up, man? He was like, all right, I got some new stuff. Because he know I wanted the exclusive stuff. Bro, but he used to give me also cassettes. He would be like, hey, man, this is going to be on tonight on 98.7 Kiss. Bro, Fred, I would have it first. And I was like, yo, I would be like, Totally suit the go in the house and, and play it, man. It, it, so it, so so for a lot of for, for, for a lot of the, the, the people who or, or the individuals who got into this freestyle music, somehow, some way there was a connection with freestyle, like the Rosie Perez and the Elizabeth and and you know what I'm saying and La India and Mark, you know. Right. Freestyle was like the seed, if you can say, right? The, you know, but the seed for the majority of people don't know it was freestyle you know what right. i'm saying so right. so so you started at you said 15 i started 15 producing like not pro not produce produce like I, at home i would practice on the keyboard that's how also i got it i got it i got into the group and more so how did you get your money to get these things like you were young my mom's bro let me she tell you something not... and may, may she rest in peace god bless her so uh, let me tell you something let me let me share a little story my mom's I used to go to this guy's house uh, across the street. And his name was Val Valentine, and I used right. to go up there to practice how to DJ. I was probably like 14, 15 years old. Freeze, people! This happened last time. I wonder if that's mine. All right, let's go. You pause for a little bit. We'll be back on. Yeah, all right. So I used to go to this guy's house across the street named Val, and I used to practice there all the time how to DJ because I didn't have DJ equipment. So he had the DJ equipment, right? So one day I went on a Saturday morning to go to his house, and unfortunately he had a girl over. So he was like, nah, my man, you ain't coming in today. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like a little boy, you know, I was like 14. You know, I got sad. All right, no problem. I left. I went back home. I went into my room. My mom walked into the room. She was like, yeah, in Spanish, ¿Qué te pasa? ¿Qué pasó? What, what's wrong with you? What happened, right? She saw my sad face. I was like, nothing. He was like, what happened? You didn't practice. Val, Val, you know, Val didn't let you practice. I said, yeah, ma, he's busy. Bro, my mom walked out of that room and I was like, you know, looking out the window. I was, I was, I was sad. I wanted to practice, right? Bro, my mom walked in 20 minutes after that and she goes, come on, let's go. I said, let's go where? She goes, let's go. There was a store back then. It was Canal High Fire and Canal I remember, Street. Yeah, you know, right, yeah. right. So, so I said, ma, where you want to go? She says, where do you buy that ticky, ticky, ticky thing at, right? I'm like, mom, you don't got no money. She's like, no. I'm going to I'm going to take the rent money for this month. I'm going to jeopardize the rent wow. this month wow. to buy me to buy you equipment. Wow. Bro, I was so like emotion that bro, I, I just grabbed and started crying and she was like, "No, come on, papi, no te papu, don't, don't worry about." It. I was like, "Wow, I still remember to this day, bro." I, still, what was, I get emotional sometimes for that. That's man. beautiful, bro. I mean, look, man, and not that many people have a support system and support system, family support system. You know me, I love my boys, man. So when I hear stories like that, I think it's just it's So touchy, that's man. So, so that's where the equipment was coming from. My mom would jeopardize her. What was the money. keyboard? What was the keyboard you got? CC one on one, bro. Yeah. CC one on one. And actually, that keyboard that's was with the yellow pads with the little yellow pads on it. Yes, yes, yeah. and and it was a small C. It was gray. It was dark right. gray. Yeah. Actually, that keyboard was the keyboard that you hear on "You Never Find the Love." Din 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 din. That was the key. That was so basically what happened. I, let me just go on forward. What happened was I, uh, I had a guy named David Berrios. We used to hang out in a park and he was like, listen, Wilma, Sapphire is looking for a remix on Let Me Be The One, right? Right, right, right. So, right. Uh, you know, I'm just a little editor. You know, I, I, I used to do edits on pause buttons and stuff like that. Like, Arbor was... Albert used to tell me he used to do his, his edits on pause, like on, 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 on a pause on a button, on, on, on a cassette, on a right? So he would tell me he'd do that. So I'll go home and practice. All right. I'm waiting for Frankie. So you should go home back and uh, pause again. You should go home and practice. Yeah, I used to go home and practice. And this guy, David Berry, was like, look at uh, Sapphire's looking for Remus for Let Me Be The One. But I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. She's going to pick me, right? Yeah, OK. And she's already married to Albert Cabrera, the land rascal. So yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. So he was like, listen, man, just try. So I put a, I put a remix together, whatever. The, the the thing that that changed the remix, my little remix, of course it was not they didn't, they didn't take my remix. It end up Lion Rascals end up doing it. But what made my remix was a little different was that I play keys on it, on the remix. Right now you talking about this is back then when you know that stuff was like really big doing overdubs, right? Right. So I, I played right. some keys on Let Me Be the One. It was a week later then right. she was performing. Uh, of course they didn't pick it. They end up picking up the Lion Rascals because you know they were they were the beast yeah. back then. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. They were all over the place. Uh, uh, so then a week later, she was performing with the Latin Rascals and TK at Heartthrobs, in, in wow. a club in Heartthrobs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in there, my boy, man, he rest in peace, named Benny Blanco. He used to be a, a bonzo over there. He I, re I remember for, Benny. I remember yeah, he used Benny. to do role management for Little Louis Vega, right? So, right. you know, 
So uh, he worked there, and he was like, yo, you want to go back there and meet um, the Land Rascals and Sapphire? And I said, like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. So he go, hey, Wilma, this is uh, Frankie Colors. And, and he was like, oh, hi, how you doing? I said, by the way, I'm the guy who did the remix, Let Me Be The One, on a cassette for da uh, with David Berrios. And she was like, oh, yeah. She was like, oh, my gosh. She said, Albert, come over here, Albert. And Albert said, I know who he is. He lives in the hood, right? So Albert, That's how he, he, gets he was, rocks. He, he's the yeah, he throws rocks, rocks, rocks in my window. windows, bro. And then she was like, Panchito. And Panchito's her brother, Angel. Angel, come over here. Because she was like, listen, my brother's doing a group. So that's how the air more came. Because what happened was, she was like, once you come this Monday, we'll try you out. We're looking for a keyboard player at uh, for uh, a group we're trying to put together. Yeah. So that's how the whole air more I went. I knocked on the door. Of course, I was nervous. Hell, I was... Bro, I have yeah, yo, you were you were a shy guy back yeah, in the day, bro. Yeah, bro, I was shy, bro. Night like, and day, he, bro. You know, people, he didn't speak much. He didn't look in your eyes much, you know, because he was, you know, he was blue eyes. He had the little prince blonde hair jersey. Yeah. <laughs> we're all, you know what I'm saying? We're all trying to look the part, you know, dress with a little brooch and all that stuff. So, you know, we that was the time. We all wanted to be prince, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was the look. So and, and of course I went over. I was I was nervous as hell, and she told me to play keys. I, bro, I was not a real keyboard player. I was just like a finger keyboard player. But, but anyway, the they end up. Let's go on that. Let's go on that. So let's segue to that. So growing up in the hood, you know, unfortunately, we were taught what our predecessors taught us. You know, go to school, study hard, stay out of trouble. And we used to play in the street with our friends, but we were never really pushed. Well, I know I wasn't really pushed by my parents for music, learning music. So where did the, the desire to come? Because did you take classes at the beginning? Did nah, you just man. say, you know what? Um, self taught my, 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 well, my father used to play a lot of the hebato music, you know, some of the stuff from PR with the with the, with the the guatros and all that stuff. Yeah, and just she, explain we, to the people who don't understand what hebato music is. So hebato music is more like, a, it's salsa, but it's more down tempo. Yeah, it's more down tempo. It's mo it's down tempo. Mark Anthony uses it a lot of his, Frank, his music. Man. Um, it's probably am I'm there? over there, Frankie Frank. Right. Nah, man, it's, it's three something, bro. <laughs> All right, so you so so you do the old school uh, uh, ballads and yeah. folky music that they used to do in Puerto Rico. Right, right. So what happened was my father used to play that music, but downstairs and listen, downstairs on the first floor, Mark Anthony lived on the first floor. Okay, so his okay. father was doing the same music. You understand? Uh, so I used to, so I used to listen to both my father, his father, because his father used to come outside and play with his his brothers. Can I pause right there? Isn't it yeah. funny how back in the days, because the apartments we lived really close, we could hear everything. You remember how the bass lines used to sound? Yeah. The bass line of those salsa records. Yeah. 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 It would yeah. it would resonate through the walls wherever you through were. Through the walls. So that's right. If you think about it, you got embedded melodies in your head as a little kid. Yeah, man. So it, th that between that and my brother DJ, my brother was a DJ too. Oh, I didn't know. He that. was he was he, you know he's a DJ, but he was not really like into it. But he would do it as a hobby. I come out of work and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So between those those three, you know. I, something stuck into me and i was just like man i i love the melody something with the melodies you know what i'm right. saying the melodies yeah. the beats and stuff like that and it was just like man i love this man i love this and of course i used to try to get into my brother's room when he was working and stuff and pick the lock my mother used to pick the lock for me and stuff like hey go 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 play with equipment of course he used to catch me he's like you left the equalizer on you idiot <laughs> <laughs> Man, he rests in peace. That brother I'm talking about, he just passed away from cancer about three months oh, ago. Sorry, my brother man. Tito and stuff. Yeah. So he was he used to be like, yo, you left you left the freaking equalizer on. I know you was in my room. But I learned from my brother a lot of the DJ stuff too, man, believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? And as what, far as musically, I you know, I used to look at my father and stuff. What know, was so. his what was his your, your brother's uh personal test of uh, uh, taste in music? My brother used to play like you know all the all, all the electric stuff. You know he used to play like and all the funk stuff like you know Makusa. You know he was into all the break all the break beats. So that we was call it because he's because he's like early late seventies, right? Yeah, he was like 78, 77, 79, You know Sarone. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? He used to play Sarone. Wow. Used to play all that stuff, man. And and so sonically, what you were hearing, you were hearing live instrumentation. Of yes, man. It wasn't. Yeah. Live. It was a few synths. It was mostly a few. Was live, it was live stuff, yeah. To be real, right? To be real, you know that that type of stuff. Yeah. Freedom, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, man. And, so. and here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand: so that when we grew up, and when I say we, I don't want to alienate other people. Me as a Latino, I'm talking about my perspective. When we grew up, we, we I was listening to music 
that was uh, embedded in my community because I was surrounded by Caribbeans, Blacks, uh, South American, North Americans, you know, Italians, Jews, and it was just a little bit of everything. But the sounded big. You got you have. Uh, let me pause there. We have string sections, symphonies, you know, real life strings, and 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 when the hip hop era came in, all this electro keyboard funk started coming in. Right. We, we, we were trying to duplicate that. Right. And uh, we, we started creating our own sound. When did you start getting into freestyle music? Oh, like, um, I started getting into freestyle. Well, I, you know, when I did uh, You Never Found of the Love, because I, I listened to all the Shannon, all the Arthur Baker stuff, the John Roby stuff. You know, I listened to all that stuff, you know, Chris Barbosa. So I was already into that, you know, listening to 92 KTU, you know, the Land Rascals, Aldo Marin. Uh, 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 the Animal Steel, Dave, I think his name is Dave the Animal Steel, you know. So I listened to these people where they were creating stuff and uh, uh, also producing some of these big, you know, le electric music, right? You know, electric right. records, you know what I'm yeah, saying? These yeah, big yeah. records. So when I did You Never Find Another Love, I was already, I was, you know, I listened to the Please Don't Go, you know, by Andy Pander and, and, and um, you know, the Land Rascals. And oh, so I already listened to those records. So by the time I, I got to You Never Find Another Love, I already had that in me. So you know, I had the, the, the I had the, the Latin, I had a little bit of the, you know, the funk in it, you know what I'm saying? Right, and, right. And if you listen to the uh, You Never Find Another Love, the bass line from You Never Find Another Love, I mean, it was not quite like it, but I, I kind of like, you know, took the rhythm of the Mexican. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like that, you know, that that rhythm of the Mexican, you know You know what I like a lot about, a lot about your your lead keyboards? You always had nice leads on the hook, right? Right. I knew when you, I knew I I can tell a Frankie Cutlass record when I hear the lead keyboards on the hook because that's a signature sound that you have. Right, that's what I, I, had, very, I had. Very very. I had two signature sound. I had the do 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 right the clave, and then I had the string, which you could hear that on the Lizette Together Forever. You could also hear that on um. Give me uh um uh, uh uh what's TK uh uh give your love to me give your love to me because you know give I produced that too we're gonna get into that we're gonna get into that right, right. This. that and also up? still miss you still miss right. you by the still couple girls you. exactly right now what about the 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 uh the constant uh then 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 what do you yeah that those are those are those are uh, like arpeggio but that was arpeggio that was right. live arpeggio. arpeggio right 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 so you right. played that live. I played that live because what happened was Albert was in the studio. He was like, all right, we need something else because Albert also, Albert Cabrera from the Land Rascals, he also mixed, he mixed uh, uh, You Never Find Another Love. So when, when right. those that's pads totally right there. Different, that's a totally different animal. People don't understand the mixing. Yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. So he was, we was mixing the record. He's like, something is missing. You got to put something in here. So I, he, I, I said, bro, to try to sync that was hard. So he was like, bro, play it live. So wow. I started playing that part live bro i mean of course we took a couple of takes bro <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that was live stops freezing and i'll explain to everybody what frankie just explained so what frankie just explained was back now now you put in two or three chords and the computer does it for you right and you can change the yeah. rhythm so right. if he wanted so if you wanted if back then he wanted materialistic girl to play uh so his rhythm was da 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 so now today an arranger could come in and do that da 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 stop the computer will take that rhythm and make it any da 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 he doesn't have to play it again so he had to record it live and not fuck up so and if he did they were like ah you fucked up let's do it again right which is awesome because you know you feel the energy and it sounds organic. I like live shit. Right. That's the way I like stuff. Right. You know, it, but it's much not, better live. It's much yeah. when you play live music. It's, it's it's got a different feel to it. You feel it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of the records are big now. Because a, 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 a lot of the records back then were bigger because there was tape. We used to use analog, so everything was bounced into a tape. And you know how that goes. You know, you know how that sonic is. Yeah. 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 So now, so now we're going, we're going up like in ninety. So you know, materialistic girl and all that stuff. That was like uh, eighty nine. You know, eighty nine, ninety. And then I remember meeting you. I uh, I did a record with you and Chris Yais. We did a lot of. Uh, well, we didn't, I, we didn't, we didn't meet there though. No, 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 I don't know. That was oh, okay. studio, studio time. Oh, studio, the studio. first okay, time okay. I started working with you. Because I met you in the table, bro. And, 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 
a lot I know a lot of people know this now, but we was at a table, you were signing the contract. Madeline Rodriguez, who was one of your writers, was there. Chris yeah. Barbosa was there. Yeah. And Madeline Rodriguez is cousin to a guy named Robert Vasquez. And he I... took me there. Remember Robert? Yeah, he yeah. took me there. Bro, you had long curly hair. Bro, and you was quiet. And I and you know, I would just, and he was like, This is a new he told me this is a new artist. They signing. You was not even out here, right? Bro, the funny part was that you finished drawing yourself, bro. <laughs> Oh, I remember, yeah, you remember. Cause I was, I used to, I used to do it all. Bro, you drew yourself. I was like, this is a cut. This kid was, yo, you was nice with that pencil, bro. Yeah, yo, yeah. the curly and everything. <laughs> I was like, yo, this car is nice. Bro. I remember you do, I remember you, that was the days when you know when we used to go bombing on the D line, man. So I remember back in the days, man. But so 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 now so now we're, we're going to like in the in, in the late nineties, Together Forever is blowing up and you know, I know you did a lot with Carlos Berry's that song. I know you did a lot of the chords, but you came up with the chords and stuff in the writing. So yeah. uh and, let, and then we're gonna we're gonna move forward. Let me let me explain how that happened. Okay, okay. Real quick, wait. So you know, I was with M more, so then I got cut off, right? Let's let's. Oh, that's let's, right. You were telling me that's right, bro. Let's speak the truth, right? You know, I was yeah. I was part of M all the group. You know, but found the love with Mr. girl. I was and I used to, I used to, I used to date life, his man. sister, Will M Moore. I used to date his sister. So something happened. She caught me at the club, ten eighteen, talking to another girl. I was young. Come on, you know, I was young. You know, I was sixteen years old, looking like Papi Chulo with the you know curly yeah, yeah, hair, yeah, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened was she caught me. I can't be part of. Got it. The next day, it was like, listen, man, you can't be part of this group no more, whatever. So, Damn, yeah, so I called, I called Sal. I was sad. I called Sal. I said, Sal, man. He said, yeah, I just, I just found out. I just found out. So, uh, 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 you know, so what happened was Sal, Sal said, but Andy Panda want to talk to you. So I said, oh, okay, no problem. You know what I'm saying? So what happened was I ended up uh, 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 going downtown. I went to Sal's office. Andy Panda was in his office. He says, Frankie, come over here. So I went. I sat with him. He, he was like, you're not going nowhere. I said, what do you mean, man? Like, I, I, I don't sing. I only produce. He said, well, we're going to use you for that, too. But we're, we're going to create an artist today. I was like, what are you talking about? He says, bro, you're going to be like the heavy D of freestyle. I was like, the heavy D of freestyle? I said, Andy, what the hell are you talking about, man? I don't know. I, th I think Andy's here, too, you know. So he was like, uh, I think I tell him the story. He starts laughing. He said, you're going to be the, the, heavy D of, uh, the heavy D of freestyle. So we're going to put a fur coat on you. You're going to have, like, big chains on, and we're going to have two fly girls sitting, like, you know, dancing next to you. I was like, Andy, stop playing, bro. He said, bro, I'm not playing. Right. He said, bro, call producers, call people up. We're going to do an album. Right. So the, four, the first phone call was Carlos Berrio. So I called Carlos because me and Carlos hang out a lot back then. I said, Carlos, bro, I need to come to your house, and I need to, you know, we need to create a song. So he's like, right. yo, yo, come. So I went to Carlos. The first thing I started, I, so he was like, so we ready to do this? I said, yeah. The first thing we started with, no lie, I put the record on. It was the Simpson loop. The Simpson. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. he was like, oh, that, that's cool. So he, he, because it was Carlos Berrio's equipment, so he looped it. So we right. looped it and stuff and, and, and whatever. And then Carlos started adding his drums on it. Boom, boom, back. You know, on his R8 and stuff, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden I said, "Yo, give me, give me a, let me get, a, let me get the, the Juno, let me, let me do a bass line, right?" So boom, doom, 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 doom. Bro, we started creating this whole, this whole new sh shit, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you yeah, curse, yeah, yeah. right? You curse here. Yeah. So we started creating this whole new freaking thing, bro. It was like hip hop meet freestyle bro it was it was crazy bro. but it had swing it had, crazy it had swing. swing bro it had a lot of swing to it so then carlos took you know believe it or not a lot of people don't know this that the hit on that song is your little brother no <laughs> dun, 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 dun. oh yeah dun, dun. you tune that shit man. yeah <laughs> bro so he took the your little brother hit bro he just started tuning playing with it and we created this whole thing so then uh you know, we started playing with the melody. Frank Reyes came. He wrote the words yeah, or whatever. Right, right, right. Bro, and, and we left. I left it alone. Then the next phone call was K7. I K from TK. Yo, I need a record. Let's go. All right, no problem. We met. We met at a studio in the Bronx called SOB. It was it was a studio that a lot of people used to go. You remember? Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, that's yeah. where. And um uh, and K wrote uh, uh give your love to me. Right. Give your love to me. I remember that. He said, all right, sing it. Which the demo is on Facebook. Everybody can hear me sing Yeah, everybody got to go and check out the Motel story. Yo, so anyway. Frozen again. Give him a minute. He'll be back.
Yeah, all right. So we, we, we did this Give Your Love To Me record. I, I sang the song, but I was just like, man, I don't sound good. I'm not really a singer, bro. You know, I'm, a, I'm more of a DJ and producer, man. You I, didn't I sound know. that bad, bro. You didn't I was like, bad. I sound like a chick man, man. Like, yeah. what's going on, bro? I don't well, like we were it, kids. Bro. We were kids. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was I said, I need more to this. So I called you. Remember, I called this a Jeep, bro. I need a favor, bro. I need you to come down. And uh, and do some Atlas, bro, because I needed that George Lamar, that loose touch George Lamar, you know, thing yeah, yeah, on it, yeah, right? Thanks. So you went and did your thing, and then who walks in? Mark Anthony yeah, walks in. So I said, Yo, Mark, you know, and we know each other from the building, you know, from the hood, you know. I right, said, right, Mark, right. do me a favor, man. Can you do? And Mark got on it, and then um, Chrissy got on Chrissy it. Chrissy got on it, right? And then the Wepa man did his part. Danny, for Danny those, got for, on. For those Danny. people that don't know, Don sings. A part of crying over you. That's his yeah, vocal. Said, so a lot of people don't know the the crying over you was produced by was that produced by Mickey Garcia? Uh, no, uh, it was by Owen Sober. Oh, sorry, Owen Sober. Right, Owen Sober, Sober. Right, yeah, Owen Sober. And the hook that goes crying, uh, crying. That's why I'm crying. And that's yeah, that's. That's, that's that. gone, yeah. Right, right, right. Over you. you. That part, yeah, yeah, right, that's, right. that's gone. But the, so, lead, you know, but the lead is Suave. It's, it's yeah. Jeff, right, it's Jeff, it's Suave, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, so here, here it is, I got a whole bunch of people on this record, give your love to me, right? So I'm like, oh, bro, all of a sudden this thing starts spreading like wildfire. Hey, you remember bro, that? Bro, everybody hey, started all the talking. Boroughs, all the boroughs had it. Bro, everybody started talking about like this record, like, yo, can you believe this record? It's like a new record with a whole bunch of singer on it, blah, 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 right? So, and Joey so thought they didn't like it. Yeah, like Joey Garner did it like Joey's like, oh, I can't stand that record. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what ended up happening, so then what ended up happening, um, I went back to Carlos Berrios. So I said, look, man, I I'm not a singer, man. I'm, I'm not a singer. I, I can't do this record. He was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I can't do it. Carlos, I'm not a singer. And I'm about to tell Andy Panda. I'm not going to embarrass myself like that, right, bro. Right, right, I right. sound like a chick man. <laughs> so what ended up happening was, what ended up happening was he, he, he ended up uh, 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 giving it to Lizette Melendez. You know what I'm saying? And um, and then Give Your Love To Me, K called me and was like, yo, can we do that for the next TK album? So I ended up giving the songs to them. But that's, I was about to be a singer in a, in a, in a, you know, <laughs> in a few minutes, I was about to be a singer back then, bro. You know what I'm saying? I think I, think I did backgrounds for Give Your Love To Me because I know Joy Garner. Yeah, I, I, I did do backgrounds for Give Your Love To Me for the, uh, for the, the one producer, TK. I, right. I did some oohs and ahs. I remember doing that, man. But uh, uh, I, I a lot of your stuff uh, wasn't as... I, and I don't, I'm not trying to mean this in a disrespectful way. Your your shit was very street. It, it came off very dirty. Like dirty is a word that people sometimes are looking for because sometimes you don't want stuff to be too clean. You don't right. want it to be too poppy. I, you know? I want yeah. I want to give props to Andy Panda too because he just did a, a, an interview not too long ago. I, I forgot where, but he you know he he mentioned he mentioned something, and, and I'm I'm grateful for you know that he mentioned this. And he said if it wasn't for guys like Frankie Cutler's. You know what I'm saying? And even Carlos Bear the free You lost a little bit. Say it one more yeah, time. Yeah. Andy Panda said that. if it wasn't for guys like Frankie Cutlass and Carlos Burials, these guys say freestyle free. back in the freezing. Try again. We're, we're good, we're good. Uh yeah, I just want to give props to Andy Panda because he said if it wasn't for guys like Frankie Cutlass and even Carlos Burrows for creating this new school thing, freestyle would have died. We came with this whole new era called New School, right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? We yeah. added hip hop into freestyle. Because and then Karina, all of a sudden, Karina, Karina followed, right? Karina followed. Right, right. Karina followed. And well, Karina was produced, you know, Carlos produced all her big hits. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's right. temptation right. or that. But, you know, Love Me Tonight, right? You know, right. by Cynthia. That yeah. that had a, such a big hip hop, you know, and, feel to and, it, right? And that line. It's there it goes. It's another lead line. You know, and I'm like, and, and I remember, I didn't know that you produced it until one day I started looking at the credits. And I'm like, oh, snap, Frankie produces one too? And then I started putting, I was like, hello, it sounds like a Frankie got the style record. Yeah, and yeah, was, yeah, that yeah. That was kind of dope, man. That was, that was kind of funny, you know, that they came up to me, you know, uh, that was back then it was uh, uh, Robert Verreva. Uh, oh boy, hit my little man's over there. It's all right, bro. I got three. Yeah, yeah. Hey, shout out Andy Pandas. is actually on. Yeah, I see. I saw Andy Panda and stuff like that. But uh, um, so what ended up happening was a uh, uh, Robert Verve came to my house like, "Yo, you need to do a Cynthia record." Because you know, I already did the Lizette Melendez. So he was like, "Yo, you need to give us a hit like that." So I went and and, and that was also recorded in, in my bedroom, bro. Believe it or not, bro. Wow. That's it was recorded. It, it was a pre. It was done there, the pre-production, and then we took it to a bigger studio. But it was done there, and you know, and and that Cynthia record is such a big record. Man, it's a That's huge awesome. record. I like that song number one because you covered all the elements. It got street credibility. It got street roughness. The mix is crazy. Who makes that record? Huh? Who makes that record? Love me tonight. 
uh, uh, t Tommy. Tommy? Okay, hello. Hey, What's his last know, name again? Tommy Uzo. Um, Tommy Uzo. Tommy Uzo. I, I still right, want Tommy Uzo to this day. So, so, um, so now you, you did the freestyle and you're working with everybody and you're traveling and then how did how did you start it? How did you transition into hip hop? So what happened was, you know, to be honest with you, right? So I felt at this point, and I, and, I, and I, again, I'm not here to discourage any, uh, you know, discourage or discredit anybody, but I was raped. I was being raped by the freestyle, you know. In we, the all, we all were. We all were. <laughs> right, and I, I, I'm not here to start anything, but you know, I was, you know, I was young. I, I, you know, I was. I just wanted to get on. That was my mentality. I just want to get on. That's it. You know, I don't care about the money, blah blah blah. Right. Right. So what happened was, at this point, I was starting to feel like a lot of these records were being played on the radio, right? A lot of these artists before me was such a big thing, right? And I, you know. You have people like Mickey Garcia driving, you know, from from you know, Mercedes Benz and stuff, and picking me up, bringing him, bringing me to his mansion, not knowing that a lot of that money was my records that he yeah. had produced, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, and yeah, all these yeah. people was driving fancy cars. I'm over here on the subways, couldn't even fall a freaking Pepsi bottle and stuff. You know, what I'm saying, right? So yo, geez, I was asking yo, my mother, oh, yeah, I was asking my mother, like, mommy, I'm a child. I need, I need, a, I need a Pepsi. No, man, it was like that back in the days. It was like that back in the days, man, because, you know, unfortunately, you know, our parents, you know, they had to, they couldn't, my parents weren't educated. They were working in a factory. So right. I had to learn everything right. on my own because, you right. know, they came right. here to get, to get work. And to, to, to get work, right, American right, dream, right. right. To make a better life. That's right. And uh, so then what ended up happening was, uh, you know, uh, um, I, st I started feeling this this void, like, wait a minute, I'm not getting paid for what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, to go move forward. And then after that, the freestyle started. That's when... Um, Hot 103, Hot 97 took a turn. They were like, we're not going to play freestyle no more. You know what I'm saying? We're going to start doing, um, we're going to start playing hip hop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So they started playing hip hop and stuff like that. And um, and the, the good thing about it is that, that I always had hip hop in me, you know, because in the, in the projects, you get a lot of, you get a lot of, you know, the, the, the black, my black brothers and stuff yeah, like that. They used yeah, to yeah. DJ downstairs or they yeah. used to do, you know, parties, black, black, black parties, parties, right? So, black parties, right. Yeah. So, so I kind of had that, we had that in us, you know what I'm saying? We had that, right? You know, we had that element in us, you know what I'm saying? So, what ended up happening was I was just like, you know what? I, 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 I want to produce a hip hop record. I started saying I'm gonna produce a hip hop record, and that's when Puerto Rico, believe it or not, Puerto Rico was my first hip hop what, record. What man. was what was your what was your go to drum machine to start a hip, to start a hip hop record? MPC. Yeah, it was an no, it was an MPC. It was an SP twelve hundred. The SP twelve hundred. Okay. The SP twelve hundred. It was okay. the SP twelve hundred, and the Puerto Rico came about. It was uh, it was uh, it was believe it or not, it was a it was a live convention. That's what it, the, the 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 Puerto Rico it came about a live convention. It was something live by the Cold Crush Brothers. Okay. Cold Crush Brothers. I think the Fearless Five was there. It was like a battle. Right. And there was a part there. There was a part um, uh, with Grand Wizard Theater. The Grand Wizard Theater was the DJ, and there was a part there where you know uh, the Funky Penguin came in. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> Right. So then you hear the rapper Tito. Tito was the rapper from I think he was down with the Feelers Four, the Feelers Five, and he was like, he was like, I get money, I get money, I get money, I get money. A Puerto Rico, a Puerto Rico, I get money. Right. So I said, Wow, Puerto Rico, ho. I, I spin it back. I said, wait a minute. I took it. I looped it on my SP12, and the rest was history. Bro. K7, it was a K7 said it was a fantastic five. Fantastic five. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. So, and, and there we go. And then after that, I, I grabbed the James Brown record. It was a James Brown. I forgot the name of the title. And it was the Soul Clap. Were they, were they, were, were they uh, monitoring samples yet or not yet? Yes. They were. Yes. Okay. It was, okay. Yeah, it was big. It was big. You had, to, you, had to clear, you had to clear all that. Yeah, we have to clear it because this is 1994, so they're already the whole sampling thing is already happening. Right. So right. what ended up happening was uh, I did the uh, uh, the James Brown. I, I took it to a soul clap, boom, 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 boom. Loop that, right, bro. And, and and the rest was history, man. And and I took it, you know, I took it to some of the Spanish DJs, and believe it or not, a lot of them didn't want to play. They were like, "Ah, oh, we ain't gonna play that record, crazy, bro." That's crazy. Yeah, I was. Why not? I was I why, was like, why did you think they didn't want to play? Um, I think they didn't, cause, cause you know, it was like hip hop was black, so they were like, you know, they were like, you know, right, that whole Latino thing has always been like, you know, so they were like, nah, nah, we ain't playing that stuff, and I, you know, some of the uh, uh, Latino DJs they didn't want to play, so I, I was kind of like upset, like, ah, oh, I'm done now, nah, I'm really done, yeah. but I took it to this guy named Funk Master Flex, man, and believe it or not, bro, he was like, all right, man, I got you, I got you, Flex gave me that, I got you, dogs, I got you, right, so he. I'm leaving. He's not going to play. Forget about it. It's over, bro. I'm going towards the Hudson River coming uptown. 
Bro, all of a sudden, do do Puerto Rico. Yo, I started screaming, bro. Yo, I man. was going crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah that and, record, and, the 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 energy of that record, man. It just the fact that you took a live, you know, live vocal sample and pitched it a little bit, and you know, I thought it was you on on some show or something like that. But I mean, it, it sounded great, and man, you put that in any club right now, the people will lose their ever loving mind. You know, another thing, one of the things that 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 uh, that um, that I appreciate about you was that you were always willing to work with anybody at the beginning. You were always down just to make music. You weren't stuck up. You weren't like, nah, I don't want to do that. I mean, I'm sure you made a couple of decisions on stuff that was whack, completely whack. Right. But you right. were always open to work on new stuff. I remember you were always in your gear. You need to come on. You need to come on. I called yeah. you. We finally called you one day. We call you to do the remix of I Want You Back and your friend right. came with this. Right, right. right. And, 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 that, and I met during that time too, my first artist that I worked with, uh, two big, two two artists that I worked with during that time when I was trying to make it in hip hop was the Fushnikins. Remember the Fushnikins? Yeah, so I did a remix, Jai Records hired me. I don't know how that happened. I was, that was, I was like so happy because Jai Records was like, all right, we want you to do a Fushnik. If you could do this, we'll put it on. And bro, I did it and they they grabbed it and they ran with it. I was like, yo, I can't believe that, you know, I just did this for the Fushnik. And the second artist was Shaggy, the, the reggae Shaggy, artist, Shaggy. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to always bump into him because he was signed to a, a reggae label called Signa. And right. Signa was together with Moon Rule Freeze Records. I remember Moon It was all in the same yeah. office. And that's when Rayvon, Rayvon was on your record. Remember, I brought Rayvon yeah, to do, Rayvon. I don't want you back. Right. Yeah, so hell yeah. That's yeah, how yeah. that whole thing, because Rayvon used to hang out with Shaggy a lot, man. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I remember, I remember, I didn't know who he was at the time, because, you know, I was into my, 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 my disco and my, and my salsa and my, and I knew a little bit of hip hop, but the reggae I wasn't, I just knew the, I knew an old classic reggae. The, uh, the, uh, and then you, this kid came on. Next, you know, fast forward a couple of years, and Rayvon is blowing up here, blowing up there. He's going yeah, up. man. The guy has a great voice. He's a good singing kid. Did a lot with Shaggy. He did a lot with Shaggy. You right. Know? So, um, but so when when you work, did you ever work with TK in general or just with K? No, I would. I, I well, give you love to me is a TK project. You know what I'm saying? So right. when I did TK, Joey Garner was there I, because you know uh, the. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's all right. It was this. It was the second album uh, for CK. Give your love to me. And I went into the studio and stuff like that. So uh, Joey was there and Kay was there. So so you know it was, it was a TK project. You know so I, th I think Angel came later on, and I think Tony stopped by later on too when I was doing the record. I think you know what I'm saying. So yeah. Got it. Got it. Right. And then later on the K7. You know that came about too. Yeah, the K. On. I know because I know every every. I remember every time I called K because K didn't know when you you remember my my first wife, my first and only wife, Yvonne. Remember Yvonne? Yvonne, wife, of course, right? of course. So I, yeah. I used to have to pass. K's house on 96 house. to go to Madison. Right. Every time I, I passed by K, I used to take my time because I would wait to see who's going to come out. So when I pass this building, I slow down to see who's going to come out because I was so starstruck. And I was like, yo, that's man. all like, bro, that's all like me, bro. Because I used to, and I used to tell, I tell this to Joey all the time. I used to, bro, no lie, I, as a fan, bro, I was a groupie of TK, bro. I used to walk from my house and, and used to stand on 112 and 3rd Avenue, because Joey lived on 112 between 3rd and Lexington, but more yeah. towards 3rd. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 bro, and I used to stay, because I knew, like, every Friday, Saturday, these guys had a show, right? So I used to be across the street by the grocery store looking over there, and there would be a limo park. I'm like, yeah, they're coming out, they're coming out. <laughs> I was such a group. Hey, yo. But I mean, but hey, you, that's because you were you were, you were breathing it. You know, you wanted to be a part of the movement. That's what passion does, man. Shout out to Cynthia. Cynthia's in the house right now. She's just Cynthia, my right girl, now. my girl, so, Cindy, bro. So let me ask you this now. Now that Cynthia's on, how was it working with Cindy when you first met her, or did you already knew Cindy? Yeah, we knew. I knew Cindy because uh, we did shows. We already did like a couple of shows together. Oh, so but oh, she, she was, was she, yeah, she was mad back then. She was mad because it was like a Micmac thing. So back then she was managed by George Vasconas. Yeah, may he rest yeah. in peace. And then yeah. you know we were managed by Sal. 
So we used to do a lot of shows together. So I kind of knew Cindy already, and and that's how I met also uh, Trey and 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 the other one. Uh, what's his name? Trey and um, Lowe's, Lowe's. Lowe's, right? That's yeah, how I met because they used to dance for Cindy. They used to so dance that's how I met them back then. And we talking eighty six, eighty seven, bro. We going back, bro. You know, so we, yeah. you know, so uh, so Cindy. So I already knew her and stuff like that. And um, uh, so so then moving forward, that's you know, like I said, uh, that's when I think her manager at the time was also. Then after that, she had a manager named Robert Rivera, and he approached me. He was like, Yo, we need another. We need another. Z record, but working with Cindy, but Cindy hate me, bro. Let me tell you something. When I did that record with her, bro, right. she cursed me out, bro. I, I don't care if she's on here, bro. You know, bro, I broke her in the studio, bro. I broke, bro. No, those vocals. What do you mean those vocals ain't right? I said no. You gotta go back through them again, bro. I was taking line by line. I mean, she did a great job. She she yeah. did a, a, an incredible job on right. on Love Me Tonight, right. but bro, I broke her, bro. Like every line, she had to get it right. Every freaking line, I was like, no, you gotta go back. She was like. Are you kidding me, bro? She was like, she got to a point where she got really pissed at me. She was like, I'm ready. We're waiting for me to get back on again. I, so who wrote Love Me Tonight? So Love Me Tonight is written by uh, a girl named Maria Perfetto. Maria, okay. Uh, yeah, there was a girl named Maria Perfetto that I used. Then I met this girl named Maria Perfetto who lived in Staten, Long Island. And she became a lot of the writers for some of the stuff that I, that I, that I have produced in Freestyle. Her name was Maria Perfetto. Who was who was your go to background singers back in the days? A lot of people say Debbie Cole, Jimmy Tunnel. Yeah, it was Debbie. You know, it, it, yeah, it was, Debbie, it, was, it, was Debbie, it was Debbie Cole. Uh, I Debbie was Cole. called Debbie Cole. It was like a Debbie, you gotta come in here. Debbie, you gotta do. So Debbie Cole, if you listen to the breathing on Battle of the Heart, that's Debbie, right? She had yeah, that was Debbie. Chris Barbos and Mark Lee, they used a lot of people, but she was one of the go to girls whenever we needed air on music. Air is what Mariah Carey is known for, right? Right. So you need that air sonically when you when you when you when you blend a whole bunch of vocals. You need air tracks to give it that right. beautiful just air. De so, Debbie, yeah, Debbie was on Love Me Tonight, by the way, too. Right, Debbie was on. She was on it, so she did a lot. She of was on. The, she was on Love Me Tonight. Yeah, Love Me Tonight, and she did some giggle stuff as well, right? She did giggle stuff. She also did uh, uh, the cover girl still miss you. Right. Uh, right. She, she did. A, she did a Debbie. She Debbie did a was part of a lot of records, she man. Was a beast, man. Uh, yeah, I worked with Debbie many, many times. Uh, we worked so, together so much that we used to practice, and she used to help me with the harmony. Hey, and uh, we used to we used to sit in the room, and we used to go over harmony. She actually gave me a technique to do um, uh, uh, so I could get more air. I remember she told me instead of singing loud into the microphone, George, just turn your cans, your headphones all the way down, and just hear yourself. Forget about it. the microphone is gonna pick it up. Cause I used to be like, ah, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. and then I used to do some like, you know, loving you, you know, stuff like that. And then you, 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 you build on top of that track, right. and then you right. got this, shh, this beautiful air, man. Right. And Jimmy Tunnel one time told me, uh, I was I was watching him for both people that don't know who Jimmy Tunnel is. Jimmy Tunnel was the background singer who sang the hook, let the music play. Hey, give, yeah, that's a guy. It's not a girl. Give huh? me tonight. That's right. Give me tonight. Give me I, I love, I love, you know what's my favorite too, bro? I love Monet. 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 I love her, bro. Oh, I love Monet. I, I know. I'm love... burning I've been trying to get it back on, man. Dude, bro. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I should let this. I don't want to start no controversy. Everybody, but <laughs> no, no. To... no. No, no. Controversy no controversy here. Bro. I love, anyway, I love Bernadette, yeah. bro. But it's not controversy. You know, we, I'm, I, it's not. It's, we were kids, bro. I used, to date, I used to date her, bro. I used to date her, bro. You know That's what I'm saying? I, you know. From what I used to date everybody, bro. You no, know. bro. Hell <laughs> no, bro. That bro, line. No. That line. <laughs> dun, 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 Incredible. Incredible, bro. Dun, 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 dun. Chris Barbosa, Chris Barbosa, Mark, uh, Mark, they, they were beasts, bro. I mean, like, bro, everything they touched from your, your stuff to Monet to Shannon. I mean, and, and, and even what's the other guy's name? Is this saying love? Um, oh, uh, Jay, Jay Novell. Bro, every. That was that was uh, that was Jay Novell was one of my when I had when I was with Loose Touch when I was Loose Touch the, the Loose Touch was me everybody didn't know they thought they saw Eddie right. and Kenny thought it was a group but it was me because I used to tag up Loose so I didn't have any other songs to perform so I used to perform that song so Chris Barbosa did an edit of it because the guy that sang it Jay Novell was a background singer he wasn't right. really an artist so I remember Chris doing the editing for me and let me tell you Chris told me a lot of things and I used to sit in that studio. And I didn't take it for granted. I used to sit there and I used to ask a lot of questions. The great thing about Mark Liggett and Chris Barbosa was they wanted to pass me the knowledge, man. They made me, they, 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 they built my character, who I am today. That's why me and you, we get into arguments. 
all the time. Me and, me and Frankie's gotten so many arguments that we like, oh man, F you, F you. But then within a couple of months, everything is good. Right. You know, music business is like a marriage. You know, right. you have your good days, you have your bad days. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but as long as you maintain the respect, Back. you know right. what I'm saying? And the work ethic, then yeah. you're good to go. We I go mean, on. we know each other for over 30 years, George, me and you, right. you know what I'm saying? So, right. I, you know, I, it's like a brother. It's like brothers, you know what I'm saying? Right. Real family. You know, we get into so, talking, we'll talk for a while. And I, and I, and I, and I remember, and, you know, and I learned from Frankie too, because Frankie used to go in the studio and Frankie used to try things. And I'm like, that's never going to work. But I never told you. Because right, right, I'm right. like, I'm the type of person that's like, well, let me see what, what it's going to come up to. Because it, it's he, he's either going to hit a home run or he's going to strike out. The only way to find out is, and bro, you used to do these things. I'm like, there's just no way that's going to work. And then I hit the mix later. I'm like, shit works. Man. This sounds good. <laughs> you know? But you hear it here, you right. know? And that's what you put out. So, you know, so now you were downtown. You were working. I'm um, um, hip hop. You were hip -hop. going to, what was that studio you, you always used to go to in the, it starts with a C. It's Ching Ching. It starts. It had like an Asian name. Um, what Chuck Kings? Yeah, that one. Yeah, Chuck yeah. Kings. I used to work at Chuck Kings. Used to work a lot in Quad and even D and D and even D and D Studios. D &D. You used to go to Mirror Image too, as well. With uh, sometimes, sometimes, not not all the time, but I was mostly mostly I was in Chuck Kings or I was at D and D Studios. I worked a lot in D and D Studios. Right, right. So, you know? so, 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 so then, so now, Freestyle died for a while, you know, and it was two thousand. And the new salsa was coming in, you know. Frankie David Owen was coming out. Mark Anthony was blowing up. La India was doing something. Lizette did something. You know, everybody started DLG came right. up. I came up. I started doing stuff. You know, because we need another avenue. When that was going on in 2000, where was Frankie Cutlass from 2000 to 2005? I was in church. You were in church. That's right, because you were born again. You were born yeah, again. Yeah, I, I became born again in 98. I became born again, and then by 2000, I was in the church, just, just needed to relax. I needed to chill. There was a lot of things going on in my life. I lost my mom during that time. Um, I was I was doing a lot of gang activities. So I was just really into negativity, bro. My lo my whole life just went upside down, and, yeah. and you know, I got suckered into this whole gang thing and all that. And then, and then what happened was I had... Then what happened? My, my brother-in-law was like, bro, you need to change your life. You're bugging, bro. And so I was just like, yeah, I know, I know. So what happened was one day he, he invited me to go into this church in East Harlem and stuff. So I went over there and believe it or not, bro, I, I ended up loving it. I was just like, wow, I feel such a peace here. You know what Good I'm saying? You. It, it was it, it was a non-denomination church. Good you know what I'm saying? It, it, so I, I ended up going over there and just started like getting my life together. And then I left the whole music industry. So I now, mean, I was still, I was so still now, doing little things in the music here and there. Like, I, I remember getting a phone call during that time, but I didn't, I didn't take it, bro. Bro... Uh, we talked about him early. Dave German called me, and Dave German from Columbia Records. You know, he was a big A and R there. He was like, "Bro, he was like, bro, I got, I got a big project. For you. you cannot tell me no." I was like, "What are you talking about, Dave? Please, I, I don't even want to do music no more. I'm like chilling. Leave me alone." He was like, "Bro, you, you're not gonna turn this down because this is the second rec, the second single, and it needs to be a big hit, bro. And I need your Frankie Cutlass in it." And I said, "Dave, what are you talking about?" He says, "Bro, I want you to do Ricky Martin." She bangs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, Dave, I am not doing no Vida Loca. No, I ain't doing no Ricky Martin, bro. Yeah, Leave yeah. me alone, bro. Yeah. Bro, I turned that whole record down. That record became freaking massive. Massive, bro. massive. It was yeah. Millions of records, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you learn. You learn. Every, everything is a learning process. So, right, look, I want to wrap this up because we got 10 minutes. No and problem. I will go on. There's just so much more to talk about. So, Freestyle died. And then back in 2006, you know, Salabatello started to, he decided to start taking, you right. know what, I'm going to start putting, we had a lot of clubs, I'm going to start putting a whole bunch of freestyle acts together and just promote one show. And then, right. boom, that blew up, and then it became national, and it became international, you know, in Brazil, and in Canada, and South America, North America, and East Coast, West Coast, and now, a lot of the acts that stood in as myself, because there was a lot of groups that, uh, right. that were together, and they said, if this ish ain't working no more, I need to make a living. They broke out, some stood and decided to keep the name, you know, and say, you know what, I'm gonna keep going because this right. is my passion, this is my lane. So right. you come back and now Freestyle is doing this thing. When did you pick up and say, uh, you know, Freestyle was calling you again? When did you, when did you, when did you decide to come back in? When we got- Bro, two, two years got, ago, man, two years ago. You just came in. Just yeah, man. In. Two years ago, I'm not gonna lie. What happened was, I was, I was, I was looking at, I was, I was on Facebook looking at all the DJs. I was looking at stuff that was happening, whatever. And 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 I say this with all due respect. I said something is missing here. 
And a lot of the, to me, I was just like, something is missing here. I'm okay, fine, they're doing live, you know, feeds or whatever, but there's something missing. It doesn't have that corporate feel to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? People was just going live or whatever, you know, whatever, right? playing music. And then a lot of the DJs, and don't get me wrong, and a lot of DJs don't like me to this day because of the fact that I tell them, you know, like they, they, they'll play good records and then they'll play something that sounds like a demo. And I was just really, I used to get frustrated. I'm like, don't do that. Like when you got the crowd going, keep going, right? Keep going, right? You know, yeah. and every time they'll play three, two good records. Two or three good records, and then what would happen? They'll play two, three good records, and then they'll play a song that sounds like a demo that it was produced yeah. in the basement. So I used to get right. frustrated, like, ah. <laughs> so anyway, right. so I said something was missing. So what happened was I ended up, you know, getting my equipment, buying my equipment two years ago, and then I started playing live from my my, my apartment in Harlem, and I started going live there and playing stuff, and I, you know, I started with eighty people, sixty people. So all of a sudden, the next week I started, it was like 120 people. Right. And then the following week, it was just started adding up. And then I, I started doing like, um, I started doing like researches. How, how do I get a lot of people? You know what I'm saying? So I, I went on YouTube and there was this man talking about how, how you get a lot of followers. Right. He said the key word, which I still to this day would tell share. 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 Yeah. Share. yeah. That's I learned why that from you. I learned that from you, you know, but I'm the type of guy. I wait till you come back. the type of guys I don't like to tell people I, I don't like to sell stuff I want it to happen but it it, it it doesn't you got it won't happen if you don't tell them right you know right. What I'm saying? bro so, every every time I go on live and everybody could say this look there's people here saying share share, share bro share. I'm always share come on share this share this share. Yeah. because it's like a ch it's like a chain reaction when you share when you tell them to share and they share, they got like whatever thousand people out of the thousand people, they got another hundred people that they're going to tune in. And then that person will tell the share. And it's, it's like a chain. It's, it's like, like a, like it's a like wildfire. That, it's like that 1970 shampoo commercial. You tell your friends and they'll tell them. I'll tell my, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> you know? Bro, that, and that's how it is, bro. That's why, you know, we get thousands. We get hundreds of thousands. That's why I like to, you know, people, you know, and, 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 and you know, there was a rumor, oh, that he's buying shares and he's buying likes. And it's not the thing. Okay. That's always, not you're always you're always gonna get bro I tell you this all the time. I, I'm always mo I'm a marketing genius, right, right. bro. Frankie when it comes to marketing, bro, yes. I'm crazy, bro. Yeah, Frankie, I put the Frankie, money up to it. You know me, bro. I, I, I people, do marketing I, like right. And I tell people, look, Frankie might do his thing his way, and but he does his way, but what it works for him, it works. He gets the numbers. You know, bro, and the, I always, the, the the most viewers video to this day is the one we did. We up to 2.6 million viewers. So, oh, you mean on your live, on your live on Monday night? Monday on night. the Monday night. We're, yeah. we're the top one, bro. And right. it has 44,000 shares. That's crazy. Do bro. the numbers. That's crazy. 44,000 yeah. shares. Right, right. Bro, and so, you know, so, so sharing is so important. So anyway, so getting back to what we was talking about. So I, I started doing it, bro. And then, and then my first artist that I brought, it was Lizette Melendez. She was the first artist. She came on, bro. And then after Lizette was Coro, it was Coro. Coro came on, and then you came third. And I came on, yeah, yeah. And bro, and then everything just started like, okay, because you know, some of the people didn't know, like, okay, this guy's hip hop. What, what the hell does he knows about freestyle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, you know, so then I did, I did, a, I did like a Monday night, I did this one show where it was just like, I'm going to play all the freestyle song that I had something to do with. Right. So now everybody started like recognizing, like, wait a minute, but it, it says, it doesn't say your name on it. It's Frank Malave. Remember yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, you to my government? Yeah. A lot of the early stuff says Frank Malave. So and then after that, man, it, it, you know, Monday night became so successful, bro. It's like it's like it's crazy, bro. So real quick, if we got about three minutes, yeah, we're gonna end this real quick. I, I didn't know we we're running out of time. Where would you like freestyle to go now, bro? National again. Go back on the radio stations. Uh, I, I wanted to go back like I used to be back in the days. I think you know, I, I you know. There, there's a lot of good new stuff out there, G. I'm not going to lie. I like the stuff that you did with uh, George Anthony. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like the... Je, 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 uh, the what's her name? name? Um, I, like the, I like her. Uh, what are I heard the new Stevie B stuff that's coming out that sounds pretty good. I, right. I, there, there's, there's, I think there's enough stuff to um, get through like with the new stuff and, and, and even some of the old stuff. Play Like do a combination of playing both music. I just heard, you know, Joey Garner. You know, that's another thing. Joey Garner got me excited because... I'm not going to lie, I was kind of like getting discouraged a little bit because I just feel like, you know, it's like a t this whole freestyle thing, it's like, a, it's like a freaking mountain. It goes up and down, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was just like, I was getting discouraged. All of a sudden, Joey's telling me, where are you going? You know, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, and even Andy Panda, like, we in the studio. 
yeah. you know, 2020 yeah. is going to be the year. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. come on, guys, you serious, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, they pull me back in. They're like, bro, you ain't going nowhere. But uh, yeah, I wanted, I, wa I wanted to be back like what it used to be back in the 80s and the 90s where we had major radio stations playing it, like, you know, and and I think I think it'll get there. We just it just needs to a couple of things need to be changed. But you know, hopefully right, we'll right. get there. You Look, know what I'm saying? We're a lot older now. We're working professionals. You know the way it works. We got one head up on technology. That's one thing that we got. Maybe the other the, the, the predecessors. Some do, some don't. But we got that one up, and we know how to work it. And thanks to our fans, because if it wasn't for the fans, yes, I man. wouldn't even you bro, wouldn't G, have your Monday G, show. G, I wouldn't have let my me, career. Bro, you know? G, let me tell you something, bro. I have I have. Like I had experienced this stuff in hip hop, but when it came to freestyle, I have never experienced this, bro. Gee, I do. I just did a show this Saturday at the uh, Orange County Choppers, right in Newburgh. I saw it. I saw it. My man, I, I can't believe how these people come out, bro, for a DJ. Yeah. I mean, this haven't been her. And please, I don't. I don't want to blow my own horn, but you, you, you know, this have not been done since Little Louis Vega days, man. Yeah. Like, I, like who? What DJ do you know in freestyle that'll pack a place up? Right, I mean, right. besides Tim Schumer, because Tim Schumer does great things over there in Chicago too. But mm -hmm. I'm someone like Nate. Like it's it's incredible the feedback that these people, like these well, fans. I just want to think because you got a rhythm, you know exactly what to play. You know how to get them on the dance floor. There's a rhythm. Right. There's a there's a there's a plan to. You don't just mix records. You know you got to read the crowd. And right. Like, I know what I got to play this crowd. You know, bro, I want I want I want to take this time and thank all the the fans bro because some of them, i see some of them in here bro i thank you guys and 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 bro i just humbled by just the reaction bro the reaction is, is amazing bro well listen man i i want to thank you for coming on i don't want us to get cut off i'm going to record this thing live right after Definitely. everybody's giving me ish about andy and right and, and, and joey Gardner. so i'm going to make sure they're coming back on again to finish up but you know frankie maybe we could come on, on another episode yes some future stuff 2020 is going to be a good year george thank you know you what time it is bro Nah, you know what time it's We family, bro. It's family, bro. And like I said, you know, people like you, Cynthia, Kay, um, you know, uh, Judy. Judy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you guys are like family, bro. We know each other since we were kids, bro. We've been doing this, you know, Andy Panda, the Sows, everybody, bro. I love you guys, bro. And let's continue just, you know, no matter what, let's just continue putting freestyle on the map, man. Yeah, you know let's, make let's make them dance. Yeah, let's make them dance. That's it. Let's say, hold on. Hi, Frankie Cutlets. <laughs> I see Take you care, later. G. This episode five on the talk, my man, DJ Frankie Cutlass. What he going to say? Yo, Frankie, take care, Thank man. You. One. Thank you, my brother.